Good morning, and welcome to Harmony Grove United Methodist Church, located in Lilburn, Georgia, just a little bit outside the perimeter surrounding Atlanta. Glad to have you here with us uh, on this August 2nd, on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Today's service is titled, Broken. Uh, and our uh, reflection today will be taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Also, too, uh, this is first Sunday uh, of the month, and it is therefore Communion Sunday. So we invite you in, uh, in the privacy of your own home to uh, gather some elements for communion, some bread, crackers, uh, some juice, water, uh, whatever you have at hand, uh, so that when I uh, bless the elements for communion uh, after the sermon, uh, and partake of those elements, you may also join me in that time of communion. Uh, at this time, let us open with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that in all places and at all times, we can draw near to you, knowing that you are present and that you love us. Bless us today. You know the needs of all those who are present with us, whether here physically or virtually. Be with us. We ask this always in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, friends. Today, I'm coming to you directly from my quiet place. You know, sometimes I just need to get away. I need to escape. I need to hide. Do you ever feel that way? Do you have your own quiet places you like to escape to? I think we all do, even grown-ups, even Jesus. You see, after he was done telling all of those parables, Jesus and his disciples just had to get away. There were crowds of people following them wherever they went, and all of that attention could be bad if the wrong people took notice of it. So they sailed their boat to a desert place. A desert place is a place that isn't friendly to people. There's no food, there's no water, and there's no shelter. All of the things that people need, but it might be a good place to hide.
But the people followed Jesus out to this deserted place on foot anyway. More than 5,000 men, women, and children. When Jesus saw they had done this, he had compassion for them. Compassion is having care or concern for others. And he healed all who were sick. Then the disciples pleaded with Jesus saying, send them away to the villages where they can find food and shelter for themselves. We only have five loaves of bread and two fishes among us. But then Jesus said, no, tell them to come and sit. Bring me the loaves and the fish. Then the disciples did. Jesus lifted the bread up to heaven, broke it, gave thanks to God. Then he gave it to the disciples who gave it to all the people and all who ate were fed. There was so much that there was enough to feed all the people until everyone was full. It was a miracle. Instead of sending us away from his quiet place, Jesus invites us in. He doesn't hide from us. Are you inviting him in to your quiet places? Are you seeking him there? What do some of these places look like? When I was little, I used to love to build forts out of bed sheets and boxes, just like this one. I dream that someday maybe I can have a tree house of my very own where I can go and spend some alone time with God. A quiet place doesn't necessarily have to be inside a tent like this either. It can be outside as well. Here are a few of my favorite outside places to be alone with God. Everybody needs a quiet place to escape to sometimes, even Jesus. But instead of sending us away, he invites us to his table, and I am so thankful for that. Let us remember his healing presence and peace in our own quiet places. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for these wonderful quiet places you have given us where we can be alone with you. Thank you for inviting us into your quiet place and feeding us from your table. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we enter the, the part of the service where uh, it's the offering. So basically, right now, I'm hoping at home you are in the midst of writing out that check or you are going online to provide that offering or you're getting ready to put it in the mail or come by the office and drop it off. There are many ways in which you can give uh, to, to this ministry, to this church. We continue to remain in need of funds uh, even during this pandemic, and we will and in the fall, if you want to not hear me do a series of sermons uh, on money and resources and stewardship, then give freely, and we will take care of that.
But anyway, I know that God blesses uh, all that you give. So please give as you are able. And we understand, too, that during this time there are many, uh, for various reasons, economic hardship, uh, are unable to give. So please give of your time and resources. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this world in which we live and breathe and have our being. We know that you are the creator of all things, and everything that we have comes from you. And Lord, we pray that that portion which we give back now to you will be multiplied, just as you multiplied the loaves and the fish, so that your will might be accomplished here on earth through this, your people. In your name we pray, amen. At this time, as we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer, please be mindful of those on our prayer list. Uh, as I pray, these names will be scrolling before you. Uh, please lift them up in your heart. We also ask that during the week you set aside a time uh, to pray for one another, for this is the way in which we show our love and our care uh, for others. And oftentimes we find that through praying for others, we often find that we become the answer for those prayers. God moves in mysterious ways, and prayer is one of the ways in which God moves us to act and care for others. Let us pray. Most glorious Lord, creator of the heavens and earth, King of kings, Lord of lords, we worship you, we honor you, we revere you, for you are most holy, full of loving kindness and mercy. 
you are a God of justice, and you ask us, you require of us to be obedient to your will. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to be obedient, how to submit to you, knowing that the yoke on which you place on us is light and easy to carry, for it is made of love for you and for others and for ourselves. Lord God, we know that we often fall short of accomplishing and doing all that you ask of us. So we pray for your forgiveness. And Lord God, we know that you are quick to forgive. And Lord, we pray that as we experience forgiveness from you, we might learn to forgive others. For Lord God, we live in a world that is broken, that is full of hurt, that is full of pain. And Lord God, we know that we can bring a healing balm to this world, a balm of healing and hope, uh, one that soothes the soul, if we be but examples of your forgiving love. And Lord God, this world needs that love. Lord, we are in the midst of a pandemic, difficult times, uh, protests, uncertainty, economic collapse, an uncertain future. We need your grace. We need to know that we are loved by you and that we can love others. And Lord, we know that you are a God of hope. For Lord, we saw in Jesus' resurrection that even death cannot contain you and that there is final victory in you. Lord God, we pray that we might bring that healing knowledge to this world that so hurts and that is so broken. Lord God, we lift up those on our prayer list. You know all their needs. Be with them and comfort them and heal them, guide them. We pray for those who are grieving the death of a loved one. Comfort them, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing illness and cancer and disease that you might provide for them a healing presence. Lord God, we pray for all those who are suffering through COVID-19 that you will enable them to find a ready and quick healing. And Lord God, we pray that we might show our love for our neighbors by being mindful that when we go out in public to wear a mask, to socially distance, and to know that through our example, others might find healing. Lord, we especially thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Come and pray with me on a gentle sea, on top of a hill in the Galilee, in gardens like a Gethsemane. Come away with me, come away.
Andrew, Gretchen, that was beautiful. Thank you for that wonderful offering. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Today, our sermon is titled, Broken. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Hear these words. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that we may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty tired of this pandemic. It's been since mid-March that we began isolating in place, when we all began to learn about social distancing and what that meant. And I hope we all have learned and memorized the three W's of COVID-19. Wear a mask, wait six feet apart, and wash your hands. Even though we didn't like it, we did a pretty good job at quarantine. Oh, for the first month or so. But now, after nearly five months, I think we're all pretty tired of it. I might even say that we are very, very tired of it, even fed up. Just look at the news. The pandemic has become politicized, and for various reasons, many people are ignoring the three W's by not wearing masks and by not maintaining safe social distancing practices. I mean, how should we open up our economy? When will we reopen the schools? Will it be safe? We have lots of questions and issues related to this pandemic to which we have really no good answers. As a result of ignoring these three W's and really wanting to get back out and be around people, the virus continues to spread and the end of this pandemic seems to move further and further into an unknown future. I'm not sure how much more of this pandemic we can take. But the pandemic is not the only problem we are facing now. We are also living and having widespread demonstrations, many of which are connected to the Black Lives Matter movement, a just cause, in my opinion. Many of these demonstrations are peaceful, but others have been racked with violence, rioting and looting. What the cause is behind this violence varies from one city to the next and is again often politicized. But the fact remains that people for various reasons are very, very fed up with the way our society has and is operating. And on top of all this, or perhaps underlying all this, is a deeply troubled economy with vast numbers of people out of work and unemployed. As you well know, I am only skimming the surface of the problems that face our nation and our world today. But I think it would be fair to say that, to put it simply, our society is broken. And perhaps in a way that it never has been before. And it is here, in the midst of this brokenness, that I find hope in our gospel reading for today the story of the feeding of the 5,000. We are all familiar with the story and how it reveals God's miraculous ability to take even the simplest of things, such as these five loaves and two fish, and transform it into the greatest of things, such as feeding the 5,000 people. 
We all need to hear this word of hope. Whatever little we selflessly give to God, whether it be of our time, our resource, or our service, God can and will transform that into something wonderful and use it for the building of his kingdom. That is a word of hope for us. But I want to focus on something else in the story today, something that is behind the story and that speaks to our situation today that I just described above. This is about our brokenness and about God's relationship with our brokenness. Brokenness exper uh, appears twice explicitly in our story. It first appears when Jesus took the bread and broke it. It appears again at the end of uh, the story when the disciples gathered up all the broken pieces of bread, the broken fragments of bread. But brokenness, I think, underlies the whole story. It opens with the phrase, when Jesus heard this, well, what did Jesus just hear? He had just heard that his cousin, his friend, his colleague in ministry, John the Baptist, had just been beheaded by Herod, and his head had been served up on a platter to Herod's daughter and her mother. I mean, that is some serious brokenness. And this loss of his friend, of his cousin, of his colleague, appears to break Jesus, or at least threatens to break him. For Jesus responds to this news by withdrawing to a deserted place so that he could be alone and recenter himself through prayer and meditation. But this underlying brokenness does not stop here. We find it again when Jesus returns and finds a great crowd had followed him. And the text says when Jesus saw them, he had compassion on them. Our gospel story here in Matthew does not explain why perhaps he had this compassion, but the story as related in the gospel according to Mark does provide a reason. It says, because they were sheep without a shepherd. That is, they were broken. And what Jesus is responding to here is their brokenness. And when he sees it, he has compassion and he heals them. He cures their sick. So already we see that God's response to our brokenness is not indifference, but compassion. God looks upon our brokenness with compassion, and his response is to heal us. Here again is another word of hope for us. Are you broken? Are you sick? Are you lonely? Are you afraid? Are you grieving? If so, then bring your brokenness to God, and God will have compassion on you and will heal your brokenness. But it is not just us as individuals who are experiencing brokenness right now. Our society as a whole, our world, is experiencing brokenness. Does not God also have a word of hope for our world? Indeed, God does. And we find this word of hope in those explicit references to, to brokenness in our story. In the first, it says that Jesus took the loaves, looked up to heaven, blessed, and broke the bread and gave it to them, to the disciples who gave it to the people. It is a formula with which we are familiar because we often hear it in our communion liturgy, which we will hear later today. But there's more to it than just a mere formula. In the Emmaus story uh, that we find in Luke, which is after the death and resurrection of Jesus, two disciples are walking to Emmaus, and they are joined by a stranger who uh, reveals to them the meaning of Scripture as they walk along. And as they enter the home that evening, uh, they invite this man to stay with them, uh, which he does. And, in, and when Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. As it says explicitly, they knew it was Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the bread of life broken for us so that we might have life, so that our brokenness might be healed. In other words, Jesus became broken for us so that our brokenness might be healed. 
And this is another word of hope for us. Our brokenness, our separation from God has been healed and has been made whole. Through the brokenness of Christ being lifted up on the cross on our behalf, our brokenness is healed. But again, this is not the final word of hope in today's reading. This little bit of bread that is blessed and broken in our story of the 5,000 is then given to all who are present. And even though those present numbered in the thousands, there was enough for all. Jesus, being only one person, through this one person, was blessed and broken on the cross and then given to us. And though we number in the billions, there is enough for all of us. There is enough forgiveness for all of us. And now, I think, comes the final word of hope in our reading for today. All that will be left over after we are made whole through eating the bread of life, which is Jesus, is our brokenness. All that is left over after we eat of this bread of life, who is Jesus, is what was broken. As the passage says, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. In other words, we as a nation, we as the world, are now going through a terrible time of brokenness with this pandemic and all the other associated brokenness. But as we know, we as humans, this brokenness is not new. We have experienced it before, and we will experience it again in the future. We know that. Brokenness is the nature of the world in which we live, though we rarely see it with such clarity as we are seeing it now. We all see the brokenness of our world. But, and here is the word of hope, God is not absent in our brokenness. In fact, God is with us in our brokenness, and God has been, is, and will become our very brokenness, so that when all is said and done, we will become whole and will leave behind our brokenness. Just as those 5,000 ate their fill and left only the broken pieces behind. Let us know, let us have faith that when all is said and done, our brokenness will be left behind. Why? Because God became our brokenness and loves us with a love that heals all of our brokenness. Amen. Now at this time, as we pre prepare uh, for communion, we will uh, have a hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life, and I invite you in your homes to please prepare your elements for communion.
Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may, that they may become the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Jesus comes again in final victory and we feast at your table forevermore. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And as the redeemed, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the body of Christ broken for us. Behold, the blood of Christ spilled for us. At this time, please partake of these elements and know that this meal was prepared for you before the foundation of the world. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ spilled for you. Amen. Now at this time we will have a closing hymn and I invite you to use this time as a time of preparation, as a time of recommitment, as a time of setting your attention, knowing that God loves you and he has called you to love one another. Let us sing together our closing hymn.
Amen. Thank you for all the lovely music today, and uh, we thank you for the our AV folks who are taking care of us here and keeping us live and uh, doing all this production for us. At this time, I just want to make a few announcements before we close. Uh, first of all, you may have noticed that uh, I am jumping up and down a lot as I do this uh, 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 service, and I don't know if there are some volunteers out there, folks who like doing liturgy, who might like to volunteer maybe to do the opening and prayer or maybe read a scripture. But if you're a person who likes to do liturgy and if you're comfortable uh, joining us on Sunday morning to do this live, we keep some good safe distancing and usually we wear masks when we're off, uh, off the mic and off the front. Uh, but would like to participate in that, let me know. And we can uh, provide a, a, an opportunity for you to participate uh, in our morning uh, service. Also too, uh, just know that the adult and youth Sunday school classes continue to meet uh, on Sunday morning, so please feel free to uh, check those out. We have also on Wednesday night at 6.30, we have what we call our Wednesday night check-in, and so you can uh, feel free to join us uh, by way of Zoom and just, you know, see how you're doing and hear from others. Uh, beginning on September 2nd, we will have a Bible study starting on Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30 or 8.00. Uh, we will use uh, Sandra Richter's book, uh, 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 Out of Eden, uh, so we look forward to that. Also, too, just a op couple opportunities for service uh, are available to us now. Uh, as many of you know, we have uh, been involved uh, with the Holly Ridge neighborhood for some uh, time now, and we are again uh, taking donations. Uh, we're, not taking, uh, we're taking donations of money because we want to be able to provide them with the money to buy what they need in order just to cut down on objects being touched, etc., etc. So please, uh, give us, uh, provide those donations for these back-to-school supplies, so an opportunity for service there. Also, too, I was contacted this week about what's called the shoebox ministry, and we're going to do that again. I have talked to Carolyn Swords, and she is uh, willing to take point on this. And uh, So if you are uh, familiar with what the shoebox ministry is and have participated with that in the past, please contact Carolyn uh, so that we might continue to provide uh, this ministry of service uh, during this time. There are many people who are in need, uh, and we can be a blessing to them. So at this time, I think without further ado, know that God loves you with a love that goes beyond your understanding. Celebrate that love. Go forth and share that love with one another. Amen.